Um, okay, uh, thanks a lot, dear colleagues, for joining us today. We're going to talk about um, advances in air quality forecasting and its applications in Bishkek. And uh, the keynote speech is uh, going to be presented by Dr. Irkin Isayev. But before we start, I would like, uh, I would like to give the floor to the director of uh, Mountain Society's Research Institute, uh, Professor Roy Seidel, who is uh, joining us uh, online. Roy, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Anil. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here, including our colleagues from Kyrgyz Hydromed and uh, WMO. I had the pleasure of my first experience working with WMO was when I was a professor at Kyoto University back in 2006. I was invited to a conference in, in uh, Arusha, Tanzania, on climate and land degradation uh, that, was, that was hosted by Dr. Siva Kumar from WMO. And I uh, had a very good experience with that. We published a book on that uh, based on that conference, um, but more relevant to the work that's going to be talked about today um, here in this session uh, related to air quality. This, this fits in very nicely with our, it adds a, actually a very nice and needed new adi um, addition to the Mountain Society's Research Institute agenda. Most of the work that we do in MSRI has been at the kind of more in the rural areas with mountain communities, but we recognize that this rural urban interface is, is a very important issue. Uh, we're, we're also involved in some work in, with community planning in Narin, as well as in Harag, Tajikistan, where two parts of MSRI, the two main parts of MSRI are located here in Bishkek, and we have uh, do work over around Narin. And then the other part, the headquarters is in Harag and Tajikistan. So I've come from a background where um, I personally have not done much research on air quality, but I've supervised groups that have. Um, I led a national laboratory for US Environmental Protection Agency for four years in, in Athens, Georgia in the US that had, um, where air quality was an essential part of our, our uh, fate and transport research, including modeling work. Um, and some of the work that was done with at US EPA, I think is some of the most cutting edge work that's done on air quality in the world. Uh, one of the, the big issues now that we may eventually get into is looking at roadways, um, areas proximate to roadways that have issues with air quality where the emissions from automobiles are, are very important. But getting to the heart of the work that you're gonna hear about from, from Erickson, who um, has been with us almost a year now. Uh, he came from Kyrgyz Hydromet and is well-respected. His work is well-respected in hydrometeorology in, in this region. We're trying to get a better handle on some of the huge air pollution issues that are impacting the city of Bishkek and the surrounding areas. And this is not a small or trivial issue by any stretch of the imagination. Bishkek at one, one time in recent years was ranked number one in the world, I believe in terms of poor air quality and is frequently among the top five um, worst air quality in the world. And this is particularly true as you'll, as you'll hear in, in uh, uh, winter times when due to, to, to the household heating and so on. But as I said, this is something that we're very interested in working with, partnering with WMO, um, partnering with Kyrgyz Hydromet and trying to develop relationships um, there where we can leverage our experience in areas like hydrometeorology with some of the 
some of the good work and monitoring systems that are going on. So um, this is an important part of the work that we do at Mountain Society's Research Institute. It complements a lot of the other environmental work that we're doing. And I think it's, it's something that is going to be very, very important in the, in the years from now on. Uh, as, as this problem is being more and more recognized and is becoming more and more acute. So with that very brief introduction, I will turn it back over to Anel and I thank everyone for participating and particularly um, our, our colleagues with, with Kyrgyz Hydromet and World Meteorological Organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rory. Uh, I would like to introduce our speaker, uh, Dr. Irkinisayev is a research fellow at the United University of Central Asia, uh, Central Asia's Mountain Societies Research Institute. He defended his PhD in meteorology, agrometeorology and uh, climatology in 2017 at the Russian State uh, Hydrometeorological University. And Dr. Irkin has been awarded various scholarships and he worked as a consultant at the World World Bank, UN Food and Agricultural Organization, and UN Agency for Modernization, Development, and Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. And uh, Dr. Isaev's research interests include remote sensing, natural resources, uh, hydrodynamic uh, atmosphere models, and uh, data assimilation. Uh, Dr. Isaev, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Good afternoon, colleagues from Kyrgyzstan, from UN Agency Counter Office in Kyrgyzstan, and colleagues, good, afternoon, good morning, colleagues from Europe, Roy, Professor Tarasova. Uh, let me introduce the result of our research uh, related to the air pollution in Bishkek City. So today we want to uh, present the main results of our research, uh, which we done uh, with uh, government, especially for with Kyrgyz Hydromet and Minister of Emergency Situation. This uh, research was conducted within the framework we, uh, MOU, uh, MOU, which we signed with government uh, to do uh, research and scientific cooperation in the field of climate change adaptation, air pollution, water resource management, and other things related to the disaster risk reduction. Uh, first part, I want to present the result of our research. And second part, uh, I want to present the main uh, objectives and uh, tasks relate to the follow-up actions future project. Okay, here's a, a little bit our, you know, about our university, which Roy has introduced. Yes, the last years Oh, the last years, Bishkek becomes the very air pollutant and the takes the top of the rank in the world as a dirty city in the world. That's why our government increased paying attention about the monitoring of air pollution and uh, creating a system of, to forecast air pollution to the, in the future. This, that's why government put a task for the Minister of Emergency Situation and Kyrgyz Haiderman to create a system of monitoring and a forecasting system of air pollution in Bishkek City. That's why within the framework of MOU, which we signed, we, start, we did this uh, research to solve the governmental task of Kyrgyz Republic. Okay. Yeah, where the main goal is to create a system of forecasting air pollution in Bishkek City. To solve this, uh, to achieve the goal, we solve this kind of task, uh, collecting all available data and one more digitalization of all data. Studies existing technologies in the world and, uh, and test these methodologies and methods to create a system air pollution in Bishkek City. And of course, implement created a system in Bishkek City in operational use of Kyrgyz Hydromet. And also we analyze the how the climate changes impact to the air pollution in Bishkek City. How the synaptic situation is changing over the Central Asia, over the Bishkek. How the global climate changing impact to the air pollution in Bishkek city. And of course, how the COVID-19 
pandemic uh, was impact to air pollution in Bishkek city. So here's the main uh, steps of our research. Let me briefly tell about this. First step, we collect the data. Second step, analyze the data and use it uh, AI technologies, artificial intelligence technologies, machine, especially machine learning approach. Oi. Machine learning approach and using all meteorological air pollution and synaptic situation data analyzed and created a system. Here's the observation network of Kyrgyz Hydramet. Here we have one automatic weather station, high quality, uh, which installed in 2060, measures seven parameters of air pollutants and seven manual monitoring stations and 50 local sensors, which measure PM 2.5. And I want to mention that this uh, 50 sensors were installed one year ago, and the lifetime of the sensor is uh, only two years. And by the end of this year, is finishing. Uh, the data which we are using in our research is uh, more than 40 years meteorological station data, air quality monitoring station data, and seven manual air quality data and also uh, temperature invasion data. data. And these methods and methodology we use it in our research. It's most uh, popular statistical methods and uh, especially artificial intelligence, machine learning approach. And this metrics we calculate to verify the performance of each method and methodology to choose best one and on, the, on that base created the system. Here we calculate annual temperature in Bishkek city, which can see, we can see the last 40 years, the temperature in Bishkek is increasing. As in the world, uh, temperature is increasing. Uh, we, we can see that uh, global circulation of atmosphere is changing. And this temperature increasing in Bishkek also shows that intensity of mountain valley circulation also changing. And interaction between the low scale process atmospheric uh, mountain solar uh, mountain valley circulation and global atmosphere circulation interaction also changing which uh, later i will tell that uh, it increases a more favorable condition to formation of temperature invasion layer in atmosphere over the bishkek here also we analyzed the this kind of effect that the last 10 years bishkek is increased in area twice and the, it means the absorption of solar radiation and temperature regime in Bishkek is changing. And also private house and if uh, urban is growing, emission also increases. Altogether, this effect, we can say that heat island effect increases in Bishkek city. You can see this product of a hydrodynamic atmospheric model product over the Bishkek. Uh, around the Bishkek, we have more cold air than in Bishkek. We have the heat island effect in Bishkek here. So this also, this effect, heat island effect also contribute to formation of invasion, temperature invasion layer and temperature invasion layer contributes to air pollution in Bishkek city. So a little bit about what's the temperature invasion. In normal condition, in normal condition, uh, temperature in atmosphere is decreasing by altitude. But when we have temperature inversion, we have this kind of effect that decreasing and somewhere increasing and again decreasing. This hot air, warm air is coupling the city and uh, making stagnation of emission from the city. We have all type of uh, inversion process, both uh, dynamic and thermodynamic process, but most probable is, what are you doing? Most probable is orographic inversion process. Slope of the mountains cooling faster than Bishkek air and uh, cold air has higher density than warm air. That's why the moving down to the Bishkek and moving warm air upside, which creates the invasion layer. And this process the last 10 years become increasing.
Here we calculate the days with temperature inversion layer in Bishkek city in annual and also for heating period starting from November to February. Uh, here you can see the temperature inversion days from the last six years increased twice and air pollutants also increasing. But in 2020, we can see some stabilization of some parameters. And other important things is more than 80 and 90% of temperature inversion days and PDK exit days is become to the heating period. When one more, we can see the 2020 stabilization for some parameters exit existing for PDK become, it, it will be explained by COVID, uh, impact of COVID-19 to the air pollution. Later, I will explain detail how the impact to the air pollution in Bishkek. So we have also calculated the synaptic situation, tendency and intensity of this process. And we found that 50% of uh, process, synaptic process, become to the anticyclone periphery, where the more favorable for formation of temperature inversion layer over the Bishkek. And this process, the frequency of this process, anticyclone periphery, also increasing the last six years. Altogether, urban growth, changing global circulation of atmosphere, interaction between mountain valley and large scale process in atmosphere, and also increasing temperature in Bishkek, altogether contribute to the air pollution in Bishkek. And here, during the lockdown, officially lockdown conducted from March to May in Bishkek, but unofficially it started much more earlier. We can see the 2020 is the blue one in graph, and here's the parameters, air pollutants, and here's the green one is the parameter from 2019. We compared it. This kind of unique experiment, which will help be between the lockdown period during the COVID-19 was unique experiment. And we used this experiment to identify the contribution of motor vehicles to the air pollution in Bishkek city. We know that during the lockdown, motor vehicles was in minimum in Bishkek city, except ambulance. So we can calculate approximately the contribution of motor vehicles to the air pollution in Bishkek city. Why we choose this uh, 2019? We can see that some parameters decreased from 64 to 75%. It's the contribution of motor vehicles. And why we compared it 2019 to 2020? Actually, we tested all uh, six years, but the same meteorological condition was only this 2019 to 2020. That's why we compared this uh, to be a statistical significant. So it means if temperature, daily temperature, muzzle temperature, decay temperature was the same. So heating uh, from private sector, from uh, thermal hydropower plant was the same. Only one variable. What is it? Motor vehicles. That's why we calculate and contribution of motor vehicles in percentage. And of course, we calculate the uh, correlation. Uh, we did cross-correlation analysis of meteorological parameter and air pollutants. And the blunt one is more significant ones. These uh, relations use it in our research. We use it uh, eight algorithm of machine learning approach. We test it, verify it, and choose the best one. Here's the best performance showed uh, XG boost with high, high, parameter, high parameter tuning and random forest regression with high parameter tuning. But XG boost is the best, but it takes much more time to, uh, to calculating, to computing. That's why 
uh, right now uh, servers uh, high high performance high computing system in Kyrgyz high limit only can conduct this random forest regression with hyper high parameter tuning and on that on by using this algorithm we created a system and implement in operational use in Kyrgyz high limit right now this system is working but right now Kyrgyz high limit is uh, purchasing supercomputer really good supercomputer after we are planning to install this this one XG boost regression and also right now we are created system for only for PM 2.5 due to the lack of computing power. And this is a block scheme of our created system, which predicts air pollution for the 24 hours feature with a lead time of 24 hours. Here's a block scheme, uh, air pollution, uh, air pollutant and meteorological parameter we are taking from stations and uh, forecast parameters we are using from hydrodynamic atmospheric model, which also adapt to the territory of Kyrgyzstan and uh, season by season changes the scheme of parameterizations. Here's a one example of a verification one. You can see quite good accuracy of prediction, for example, for PM 2.5. And conclusion. In conclusion, we found that the last 40 years, uh, the temperature in Bishkek is increasing, and this kind of effect of heat island appears the last 10 years, and also contribute to the formation of temperature inversion layers, which contributes to the what stagnation of emission from Bishkek. And about 80 90 percent of uh, temperature inversion days and PDK exiting days uh, become to the heating period. And we also calculate the contribution from motor vehicles to the air pollution and which parameters, for example, PM 2.5, carbon monoxide, carbon, in what percentage they contribute to the air pollution in Bishkek city. And an increase of cyanotic process, which more fa favorable for formation of temperature inversion layers. And finally, we create a system which using which uh, implement to Kyrgyz Hydermet now they are using in operational use the system to give a prediction for one day 24 hour uh, as i mentioned before all this work was conducted within the framework of mou which we signed with government and of course with the degree of our president which said the year of uh, mountain ecosystem year and climate resilience years. And we are always trying to decrease the gap between research innovation to implementation. Otherwise, the old technologies is developing very fast, rapidly. This gap must be disappear in the future, ideally. Our research, we publish it in peer-reviewed journal with very high impact factor. Our here co-authors is a representative from Minister of Vegetation, from Kyrgyz Hydramid and MSRI. After identifying the main results, we identify main gaps and follow up action plan. We prepare it and prepare project proposal. which uh, we held seminar to the World Meteorological Organization representative, and they are also supported and give said that they will provide some technical supporting for this project. And the main aim of the project is to improve the national monitoring and forecasting capacity of Kyrgyzstan especially current hydramet and determine impact of air pollution on the health of the population in Bishkek, especially for women and children, which are more vulnerable for this air pollutants. And this kind of task we should solve to achieve that goals. Assess all air quality situation with the municipal boundaries, 
institutional capacity process and assess how the air pollution impact to the health. Of course, doing clustering, identifying main pollutants by using the Z50 sensors, using by using AI technology to, to do this clustering and give recommendation to the policymakers how to decrease air pollutant, how to solve this problem, the main recommendations. And of course, improve the monitoring and forecasting capacity of Kyrgyz Hydromet. It means purchase 50 sensors, which measures air pollutant. And I want to mention that by the end of this year, the lifetime of the sensor is finishing. That's why it's urgent hearing to support continuity and sustainable observation and purchase instrument for vertical sounding. Right now, Kyrgyz Hydromet using uh, Almaty and Tara stations and interpolating, but this is not so accurate. That's why we have to purchase this kind of instrument and by using this data, calibrate existing hydrodynamic model, which will predict inversion layer. And this, if we have very good prediction of meteorological parameter, we can predict air pollution, very good accuracy. And of course, by using all this data, we should improve existing uh, air pollution forecasting system. And we can also, if it's possible, to install and verify deterministic model, fully physical and chemical model. Oh, thank you very much. Any question? We're happy to take questions from uh, audience. Can you please introduce yourself first? My name is Baymat Nezaliev. I'm junior research fellow in the Institute of Public Policy and Administration. And can you go back to the tables? When, uh, no, the previous one. No, no, no. When you measured uh, the, oh, this one, yeah. I have noticed that like uh, there was a uh, like rapid increase in the temperature inversion days uh, from 2017 to 2018. Did you identify like uh, what factors uh, influenced on it? Yes, absolutely. In our paper, we we explained it very detailed. It means that from last three years more favorable synaptic situation, the tendency of the synaptic situation increased it due to the global circulation change. Okay. In our paper, we detailed, uh, detailed give the information about this. And like another not professional question, like uh, do you know how much the, uh, those sensors, what can, can one sensor cost? I can tell, but I, I have to take permission from Carlos Heidenmet representative. Oh, oh okay. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Мирим, я представитель Кыргыз Гидролета. Если мы говорим о тех 50 датчиках, которые нам нужно обновить, где подходит срок эксплуатации, каждый из них нам обошелся в 2000 долларов с сервисным обслуживанием тоже. Но хочу заметить, что это датчики, которые измеряют только твердые частицы ПМ. Ну, есть такие профессиональные станции, которые оснащаются газоанализаторами, это более серьезные, скажем, оборудования. И средний набор такой станции от 60 до 100 тысяч долларов может варьироваться. Цена таких станций. Вот, которую у вас установлена high quality station, где-то 150, я смотрел, процентку. Да, 150 тысяч долларов high quality. А вот эти 50 центров low cost считается. Да, каждый по 2000 стоит. А, я... Uh, the, here was a question about uh, sensors which installed in Bishkek. 
50 sensors were purchased by uh, supporting of ADP, Asian Development Bank, to the correspondent. Each sensor with a service uh, for two years, it is uh, approximately 2,000 US dollars. And it's a low cost sensors class. And uh, the professional station environmental uh, monitoring, which Chris Hadamet has, is uh, approximately 150,000 US dollars, one, one station of air quality monitoring. And all those uh, 50 sensors are enough for like uh, to make uh, the measurement uh, correctly, or it should, should be more? At least, at least 50 sensors. As I mentioned, by the end of this year, the lifetime is finishing. That's why we have to prolong. Okay, thank you. Have any further questions? Uh, maybe from our participants online. Um, okay, then uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Isaac, for your very detailed presentation. Um, I would love uh, to give a floor to WMO representative. Uh, I think Professor Oksana Tarasova is with us, uh, right? Um, or maybe your colleague would love to, to say a couple of words. Oh, thank you very much. I think I will take the floor first. Um, I don't know. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. I think this is an excellent work. and. Um, I would like just to put it in a perspective of our, the priority activities within the World Meteorological Organization. As you know, the World Meteorological Organization works on the uh, provision of the services, and in particular, one of the areas is provision of the services related to the disaster risk reduction. Our, just at the recent uh, meetings between the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization and the Secretary General of the whole United Nations, Guerreras, the call was made on WMO to provide the early warning system for all the member countries of WMO. And we have 193 member countries. Our extreme air pollution, which you observe in Bishkek, is one of the disasters which on global scale costs 7 million premature deaths, according to uh, the World Health Organization. And our air pollution problem, uh, though it is connected to the meteorological conditions and it is connected to the climate change, this is a problem which can be resolved. Our, and to resolve this kind of problem, especially when it comes to the urban scale and urban domain, we need to use the best science. In one hand, it's the science driving the legislation, and it would be really great if the activities which are presented in the, in the presentation end up in the national and uh, urban legislation, let's say within the, within the city of Fortis, which are related to the reduction of air pollution on one hand, and on the other hand, the same data and the same analysis can help to adapt to the current situation. For example, if you have the episodes of air pollution, you can send the warnings to the population saying that they should practice, for example, wearing masks or staying at home or reduce transportation or spending their time in the open areas. So the system which has been developed in Bishkek has a lot of potential in driving legislation and also in creating the early warning systems for the population to adopt to the current uh, to the current situation. So it is also pretty pretty obvious that urban domain is pretty complicated, especially if you take the situation of Bishkek, where you have first urban and then you have mountains around, which creates a really very specific airflow, which is even scientifically pretty challenging task. So it was great to see the progress which has been done within recent years. The project which is done in Bishkek was presented to our scientific advisory group, which works on the urban environment and air pollution. 
And we endorse this project as a pilot project of a WMO. And we hope that within this project, a lot of the experience which we have in global community within our expert group will be used and our experts group are pretty happy to help move the things forward. Indeed, investment in infrastructure is absolutely critical. You can't do a lot of stuff if you do not observe. And I think that linking the infrastructure with the services delivered and with the potential legislation and services for the population should be linked together as one package. And we would be really happy to see even further support from the donor agencies who are supporting the health and pollution uh, research and services, as well as from national government. You see, the, the legislation cannot be introduced from outside. It should be the national government looking at those services and using the data, using the modeling, using the observations to take the measures at the political side, uh, introducing the, the limits on what can be used for the household combustion, what can be used as a transport and so on and so forth, and follow up on their legislation to really reduce the health risks for the population and the risks for ecosystems as well. Concerning the low cost sensors, uh, we looked at the low-cost sensors in, in WMO. We developed the guidance on the use of low-cost sensors. They can be used as a complementary to the high-quality equipment. And of course, the reference network is badly needed. Or if you look at the total cost of the low-cost sensors, which you have actually to substitute every two years, probably looking at the higher-cost equipment and regulatory equipment, which actually runs for much longer, 10 to 20 years, uh, the investment probably should be done in both directions, doing the reference network with a high quality equipment, plus supplementing it with a local census following the recommendations, which we developed within WMO. I'm uh, really, really happy to see the progress uh, we provide from WMO full support and endorsement to this project. And we would be happy to see more donors and more partners are coming up and providing the support are to this important project to really avoid the risks for the health of the population. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, we have one question uh, uh, online. Uh, so the question is from Janelle Madikova, uh, and uh, it is, could you please tell if the model is being tested in Kyrgyz Hydromat and when it will be available on their website? Dear Jungle from World Bank, Count Office, thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Yes, it's uh, tested and now uh, like uh, additional instrument they're using in their operational work. Okay, thank you. And uh, I would love to give the floor to uh, Deputy Director of Kyrgyz Hydromet. Can you please uh, say your name? еще раз у меня есть короткая презентация немножко было бы правильнее ее перед исследованием доктора исаева показать потому что это начало но все равно давайте мы вас коротко познакомлю с деятельностью мониторинга качества воздуха в городе бишлек так следующий Одним из функций гидромета является также мониторинг качества воздуха в городах. Основным городом, где проводится большой мониторинг, является город Бишке, как наша столица. Наблюдательная наша сеть состоит из семи, всего из 14, 14 постов 
в республике. Из них в городе Бишкек находится 7 мануальных постов, одна автоматическая станция. Вот пер, первая картинка – это мануальный пост, вторая картинка – это автоматическая станция, которая оснащена газоанализаторами. И третье – это датчики, их 50 штук, которые расположены на всей территории города Бишкек и близ, близлежащих районов. Это Сокулукские, Аламыдунские районы. Стационарные посты определяют следующие показатели. Это в основном оксиды диоксида азота, диоксид серы, формальдегид, аммиак. Автоматическая станция ведет наблюдение за девятью показателями. Это эти же показатели, а также все фракции твердых частиц и оксид углерода. А 50 датчиков ведут наблюдение за твердыми частицами. Это PM10, PM2,5. Кроме этого, также ведется наблюдение за метеорологическими параметрами в том числе. Здесь более обширно написана вся сама работа. Пробы, которые отобраны на мануальных станциях, проходят химический анализ в лабораториях. А это работа автоматической станции, где находятся газоанализаторы, которые работают и передают данные ежеминутно. Эта работа ведется с 2015 года. То есть у нас есть данные минутные с 2015 года. Станция находится на территории метеорологической станции в районе Кока-Колы в городе Бишкек. В 2020 году был разработан план, где был пункт о улучшении мониторинга и расширения наблюдений. В рамках выполнения этого пункта были приобретены 50 датчиков, которые определяют частицы ПМ 2,5 и установлены по городу Бишкек. Срок эксплуатации этих датчиков составляет два года. Это карта, где можно следить за качеством воздуха в городе Бишкек и видеть, какая концентрация и какой индекс загрязнения. Как видно вот на карте, расположение этих датчиков покрывает всю территорию города Бишкек. Они расположены по, такому принципу, принцип, по таким принципам, как автовокзалы, Места, связанные с промышленностью, с выбросом сжигания угля, это в основном наши жилмассивы, фоновые наблюдения, это парки и близ больших дорог, чтобы отслеживать влияние дорожного движения. На территории Кыргызстана у нас есть постановление, а также законодательство, которые определяют как нужно оценивать качество воздуха, а также пределы, лимиты или концентрации, которые допустимы отдельно по каждому показателю. Вся эта информация доступна в социальных сетях, в средствах массовой информации, а также у нас на сайте. Совместно с общественными организациями были созданы было, было создано приложение, где также можно увидеть данные с датчиков Кыргызгидромета, как видно, и получать, загружать эти данные суточные, месячные и во многих других показателях. Да? Отдельно по каждому, отдельно по каждой точке и по периоду времени. Здесь мы прописали проблемы, которые у нас существуют, чтобы улучшить мониторинг качества воздуха. Хочется сказать, что уже больше года мы ведем непрерывные, непрерывные наблюдения за ПМ 2,5. Еще с 2015 года у нас идут работы с автоматической станцией, где ведутся наблюдения за девятью показателями. Но у нас еще нет утвержденных национальных методик, которые бы нам показывали, как нужно обрабатывать эти данные и оценивать. 
пока мы пользуемся иностранными методиками, российскими и финскими. Как ранее эта перспектива развития, перед нами стоит задача продлить сроки эксплуатации этих датчиков, то есть обновить этот парк этих датчиков. Кроме этого, как для миллионного города Бишкек, нам необходимо покрыть площадь наблюдения не менее чем 10 профессиональными станциями, с которыми можно было бы углубленно далее изучать качество воздуха города Бишкек. Нами составлены меморандумы о сотрудничестве с Азиатским банком развития, также с университетом Центральной Азии, в рамках которых проводилось это исследование, о котором рассказывал доктор Исаев. Также мы работаем с общественными организациями, чтобы иметь возможность сравнивать данные разных датчиков, у которых и также еще и разные производители. Это основные те загрязнители, по которым у нас наибольшие загрязнения. На первом графике у нас частицы твердые, диоксид серы и то, как они зависят от изменения температуры воздуха. Так как они являются основными выбросами, то есть основными источниками этих загрязнений являются сжигание угля, также и поэтому видно, что прямое у них прямое влияние температуры воздуха. Тем холоднее, чем холоднее становится воздух, тем выше становится концентрация этих показателей. Но кроме этого, внизу можно увидеть концентрации диоксида и оксида азота, основным источником которого является автомобиль. И можно увидеть, что в летний период или в теплое время года, как на первом графике, не бывает, чтобы летом их становилось значительно меньше. Это говорит о том, что автомобильный транспорт у нас в городе присутствует все время. Летом, возможно, их становится меньше, но не так, чтобы это сильно повлияло на всю ситуацию. И поэтому в дальнейшем, чтобы делать такие научные исследования, использовать их в практике, важно получать показатели концентрации не только ПМ, которые летом в принципе и пропадают, да, и не может показать ситуацию, которая связана с автомобильным транспортом. Также и необходимо вести мониторинг и расширять сеть за наблюдением диоксида, оксида азота и других показателей, которые, возможно, еще более вредные. И всем известно, насколько актуален этот вопрос, особенно в городе Бишкек. Мы очень заинтересованы, чтобы и дальше проводить научные исследования далее, с дальнейшим вовлечением это в практическую работу. А это просто для осведомления. Годовой, годовая такая, скажем, картина где данные по датчикам разбили на районы, в каком районе у нас больше наблюдается загрязнение, а также можно увидеть ход загрязнения по месяцам, что к концу года, в холодный период, у нас показатели загрязнений становятся выше. Да? Спасибо за внимание, если есть у вас вопросы. Okay. Let me summarize. Just in English, a little bit. Let me summarize the talk of from Kyrgyz Hydromet representative, deputy director of Kyrgyz Hydromet, Miri Masanbekova. Uh, she mentioned about uh, the observation network of Kyrgyz Hydromet. They have 14 manual observation stations, one high quality uh, meteorological and air pollution monitoring station and more than 50, uh, 50 local sensors. And they mentioned about cooperation between UCA and uh, NGO. Also mentioned main problems and tasks which they want to solve in the future. Thank you very much. And Professor Baklano, do you want to say something? Well, uh, uh, 
Hello, everybody. Sorry, I, I joined the, the meeting a bit later because I just uh, arrived uh, uh, from uh, Cote d'Ivoire on from uh, mission from airport and uh, uh, didn't have uh, opportunity to start from uh, first uh, minutes of the meeting. Uh, as just you, you asked me to uh, be a panelist so I can uh, comment uh, from my professional point of view and also from uh, uh, Gourmet Science Advisory Group for uh, this application of this project, what Oksana uh, is uh, already uh, informed um, uh, briefly. Uh, about the results. Uh, just about me, uh, I'm a science officer uh, of the uh, World Meteorological Organization uh, Science Innovation Department uh, in Oksana's division. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, I'm professor of uh, uh, Copenhagen University uh, in um, atmospheric modeling and also uh, start uh, my uh, work. Uh, more than 40 years ago in Novosibirsk uh, Computing Center, uh, led by academician Marchuk that time. Uh, and uh, that time uh, we had also modeling uh, for Bishkek and also for Almata uh, for air pollution and uh, formation of inversions in uh, these uh, mountain areas. So I'm quite familiar about the problem, even more. Uh, I was Dr. Isaev, I remember when I was uh, uh, visiting professor in St. Petersburg that time, and uh, I remember his uh, really very good and strong uh, PhD study. So I'm happy to see uh, this great progress of uh, uh, the project for Bishkek. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> we are glad to uh, collaborate uh, with your project within the uh, uh, Global Atmosphere Watch urban meteorology uh, and environment research size advisory group where uh, you uh, applied for um, a project uh, we had actually two meetings of the uh, uh, size advisory group uh, uh, analyzing your proposal and uh, have some uh, comments uh, uh, in general very positive and uh, uh, we approve as pilot project because uh, uh, we see some uh, potential for further development and uh, uh, consider as first step and uh, the size advisory group uh, would be uh, able to help you and um, uh, streamline to uh, further development of the system uh, using experience of other countries other cities and research groups uh, who are working in this area uh, of uh, um, uh, Gurma uh, Science Advisory Group and uh, actually uh, realize such system in many cities uh, and mega cities around the world. <coughs> but uh, I have to say what uh, we had also some critical uh, comments for uh, this project. Uh, first of all, um, uh, it is important to uh, demonstrate what kind of novelty uh, uh, this project uh, provides to Gourme uh, and uh, WMO um, um, experience. And uh, from other side, um, uh, there are several questions which uh, will be sent soon. Uh, 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 so I will not go into details, in particular about uh, observation system and uh, choose of uh, um, low cost sensors and uh, validation of uh, um, uh, these sensors um, in particular what uh, it is recommended to uh, put uh, low cost sensors in pairs uh, with uh, the main stations uh, station uh, of uh, uh, hydromet where high resolution uh, uh, observation uh, realized and in this case you can monitor how uh, this uh, uh, low cost sensor uh, providing uh, uh, in comparison with uh, uh, high resolution, uh, high quality uh, instruments. Uh, and uh, concerning uh, modeling approach, of course, uh, it is a good uh, approach what you are using based on um, machine learning. But in, in such a uh, city like Bishkek, it is very difficult to provide good quality only based on uh, 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 such network. Uh, anyhow, a 50 uh, 
sensors, of course, is good for uh, realized, but uh, it is uh, not uh, enough. And also, uh, period of um, uh, long term uh, uh, monitoring need to be uh, even longer. So I think it's uh, good to analyze. So this, from this point of view, the uh, size advisory group uh, recommend to combine uh, numerical modeling. Uh, not only for meteorology with uh, WORF, but also with uh, running WORF CAM uh, for a combination uh, with uh, machine learning. And the best option, what uh, several uh, cities demonstrated, it is a uh, hybrid scheme of uh, uh, modeling with 3D models and machine learning as a kind of adjustment. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, I think it would be uh, uh, strategically a uh, more uh, relevant uh, system for future uh, uh, realization as operational system for uh, for a casting uh, of air quality in Bishkek. And also for a uh, uh, study of uh, urban heat island, um, I think it is uh, important to analyze because SIC stations are on different elevations uh, and of course, for analysis of um, uh, heat island uh, effect and also for um, uh, machine learning, it is important to see uh, how um, circulations is affecting uh, these processes uh, and also um, uh, accuracy of uh, uh, calculation of par urban, non-urban stations for uh, in particular for uh, urban heat island. Uh, so it's just um, some comments. And for future, uh, what we would recommend, uh, maybe it is uh, as next uh, phase, because uh, we already discussed with uh, Dr. Isaev on uh, the previous uh, seminar. And um, uh, the main problem for direct uh, modeling um, uh, this WORFCAM or uh, similar uh, air quality model uh, uh, is what uh, emission inventory uh, for Bishkek is not a, a good uh, resolution and not, not, not good enough. Uh, so uh, it is a really problem and um, uh, one of the way how to improve, uh, especially in comparison with such network what uh, you developed, with low cost sensors uh, and machine learning, it could be also inverse modeling for adjustment of um, uh, emission inventory based on um, uh, observation of uh, atmospheric pollution uh, in, in city and surroundings. So it could be maybe also one of the way uh, for further development within the uh, Gourmet, uh, maybe not on pilot phase, but uh, as a kind of a continuation. And of course, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Professor uh, Ranjit Soki is uh, not available. He's uh, sick with COVID and uh, uh, not, not uh, able to join uh, now. But uh, we discuss, and uh, he, he is uh, very positive on, 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 on that. And uh, uh, he'll collect all comments from all members of the uh, um, size advisory group and uh, send uh, it to Dr. Isaev soon. Uh, uh, but in future, uh, maybe it could be uh, continued as a kind of larger uh, scale uh, project with uh, different approaches. And uh, concerning, uh, uh, of course, funding and uh, uh, support from uh, government, uh, it was uh, uh, fortunately uh, a big meeting of United Nations in Geneva of um, a forum of uh, mayors of uh, cities uh, uh, around the world. And Bishkek was uh, represented there. And I had a meeting with uh, a delegation from Bishkek with uh, vice mayor and I think uh, uh, chair of uh, city council and some also uh, members of the uh, administration and inform about your project. Fortunately, they know and uh, uh, positive about that. But of course, uh, it would be good to um, 
uh, merge uh, uh, efforts and especially together with the Hydromet uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, other research organization. I would also recommend uh, to contact with Kazakhstan. Uh, we had just recently also a project and published uh, uh, two papers uh, with uh, uh, Professor Zakarin for uh, modeling of uh, uh, Almata atmospheric pollution uh, based on WARF-CAM model uh, and also using um, uh, observations which are available and also including uh, satellite data. Uh, so uh, they are working with similar and Bishkek has uh, many similarities with Almata. Almata, of course, even, even more complex uh, city uh, in mountain area. Uh, but um, uh, the experience could be useful, especially because they have ex good, good uh, uh, knowledge about uh, uh, use of uh, WARF-CAM, and uh, you can also see uh, these publications uh, uh, about uh, uh, recommendations, how and what kind of parameterizations to use uh, for a so uh, complex terrain uh, like uh, Bishkek or Almata. So this is just my... Uh, short comments, but uh, I hope we'll continue to work with uh, uh, you and uh, um, the Gourmet Science Advisory Group will say uh, more uh, advices and help to you. But in general, I think it's very good and, and it's great uh, what uh, this project is realized on good uh, scientific knowledge uh, and also uh, this uh, good experience of uh, uh, your colleagues and also uh, that's great that Roy is uh, supervised uh, this uh, uh, work and activities. Thank you and good luck for your work. Thank you, Professor Baklana, for your comments and suggestions and recommendations. As your previous recommendation, we are following the recommendations and I think uh, we have uh, two problems here. In Bishkek, first is the computing power. Second is inventory, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, by in one year, we want to solve this computing power. Girls Hydermet has World Bank project. They are purchasing some very, really good computing power uh, computing servers. And uh, I think it will be, as you mentioned, it, uh, further development of this pilot project with your technical support, of course, the scientific and uh, advisor group of Grumet or the World Intelligence Organization. And my director, Professor Roy, is raised hand. Please, floor is yours. Thank you, Erkin. Um, Dr. Baklana, um, I very much appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. Those are quite relevant, quite useful. Um, I just want to share an experience I have as a my background, incidentally, is in hydrology, but I've, I've worked a lot, obviously, with climate data uh, because it's the driving influence in, in hydrology. And, and I've worked a lot, and I guess my ideas about this have evolved over a career of, my God, almost 50 years now. Um, so going from a, a, a place where I was collecting data at really small scales, really detailed data, to now looking at data that's applied over not only landscapes, but drainage basins, wide areas. And I've seen, you know, if, if we were sitting here 15 years ago, 20 years ago for sure, but 15 years ago, I would have just shaken my head and say, remote sensing information is just, you know, it's not really very relevant. And now it's very relevant. Now it's very relevant and it's getting better and better all the time. And it's getting even free with uh, Sentinel satellites. So um, I think when we're talking about, and this is getting back to this issue of sensors, whether we look at detail, you know, really expensive sensors versus, versus low cost sensors. As I've developed in my career, I've recognized that when you start looking at large, you know, large areas, 
it's probably better to have data that are approximately correct that are distributed over a wide region rather than just small areas that have very accurate data. Now, that is not to say, I'm not disagreeing with anything you said, but that's not to say that we can't, you know, take, do comparisons at sites where we have these low cost sensors with the more detailed data, uh, sense, uh, much better sensors. That's essential to, to kind of calibrate them at sites. But to get the, the spatial distribution of pollution parameters, and again, this is not, air pollution is not my area of expertise, but I don't think, you know, I think the same algorithm applies for things like temperature, for precipitation. We're dealing with a, a situation, for example, in Tajikistan, where all of, the, all of the meteorological stations primarily are at elevations in the range of less than, well on less than 2,000 meters to maybe 2,500 meters and not much. There's very few stations above that. And we just submitted a paper to PNAS on this. When we look at trying to extrapolate climate data for things like, like what's happening with the glaciers in that region, that, that meteorological stations, that data is not very relevant or it's irrelevant almost because it's at, at element. So we have to rely on, on remotely sensed data. And we know it's not as good. We know it's not as good, but it's different. It's, and, and, and understanding the differences on how the data is called, we know it integrates over areas, which from some standpoint is a good thing to do. It's good to integrate over some areas. Um, so yeah, I, I feel, let's put it this way. I feel strongly both ways. I think we need the, de the more detailed data, but I think we need the dispersed data as well. And then we also have to, you know, talk about how we integrate this data into models. And I've done some modeling in my career. I'm not doing it now, but I'm working with modelers. And uh, when I was with EPA, I mean, we were doing this multimedia model where, which was incredibly complex, where you were looking at transport of contaminants from the air to the soil, to vegetation, to soil water, to streams, and then to, to uh, organisms, uh, fish, humans, and so on, uh, that were consuming um, products in the water, uh, humans consuming fish, and so on. So we had this very complex multimedia model that took years to develop. So, you know, there, there was all kinds of controversy there. Do we, there's very few nations that can support such a multimedia model. And we really needed to look at the possibility of, you know, kind of cherry picking out the important parts of those models and putting it into a reduced form model. So I think we really need to be, when we're doing this work, we really need to be cognizant of the resources that we have. And the resources we have, even in Kyrgyzstan, are not the same as the resources in, in Kazakhstan. And the resources we have in Tajikistan are not the same as the resources we have in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, we, we always, you know, we try to get international support from donors for this, but still, uh, to continue, oftentimes that support is short lived, and and the 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 problem is then continuing that level of 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 monitoring and that level. So those are just a few of the issues that I wanted to, but I do very much um, appreciate your your comments, uh, Alexander, and and uh, we really look forward to working with you folks in the future. I think we have a really good group that we've we've um, developed here in Bishkek, uh, and and also our group. I, I, I'd invite you to talk with us. Maybe this is not your area, but we also do a lot of other different types of the disaster work uh, related to natural hazards. Um, 
landslides, debris flows, flooding, and so on that are very tied directly into meteorological events. So we'd, we'd, um, we'd love to engage with WMO in some of those discussions as well. So thank you very much. And, and I'll, I'll draw to a close with those comments. Uh, back Thank you, Roy, and I fully agree with your point about uh, uh, remote sensing data uh, and combination, but remote sensing data are providing good uh, special uh, uh, resolution, uh, but from other side, without in situ data and observation, remote sensing data uh, not enough, yeah. so combination yeah. is the best option. And Absolutely. Yeah, and concerning... Um, uh how models to link with this observation uh of course uh, data simulation sometimes uh, directly is too expensive but uh, the easiest way uh, for example for copenhagen we uh, realize system with kalman filter it could be a, a yeah. relatively cheap uh, procedure but maybe later we can discuss some details <laughs> yeah actually i used to work in copenhagen i was with uh, gius uh, so connected to the to the uh, University of Copenhagen uh, okay. uh, well, geological I'm more institute there. Okay, okay, interesting. Yeah, it was a long. It was 1996, 1997. But I I don't know if you do. do you know Karsten Ho Jensen, who's a yeah, well known of course, of course. Yeah, well known soil physicist there. Yeah, good friend of mine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the wall is very I'm so small. sorry for interrupting this lively discussion. We have one more question from our offline participant, if you don't mind. Um, sorry for interrupting. Sure. Can you no, please no, introduce thanks. yourself? Uh, Первую очередь я хотела поблагодарить за приглашение на презентацию данного исследования. Как всем известно, в последнее время Бишкек входит в десятку самых городов, грязных городов мира. И для мэрии города Бишкек решение экологической ситуации и улучшение качества воздуха для нас очень важная и приоритетная задача сейчас. И как раз вот такие вот исследования нам помогают именно в принятии решений, именно обоснованных решений, которые обоснованы на каких-то исследовательских данных. Вот господин Бакланов правильно сказал, не только должны данные, а важен анализ данных, на основании которых принимаются решения. И вот Проект, который вот предполагается реализация совместно с нами, это с мэрией города Бишкек, я думаю, это поможет и Министерству здравоохранения, который сейчас занимается разработкой индекса качества воздуха и алгоритмом действия при разных уровнях загрязнения. Это вот основная задача перед Минздравом, которую поставил, поставил Кабинет министров. И как вам, может быть, известно или неизвестно, не знаю, у нас создана межведомственная рабочая группа, куда входят все министерства и ведомства. И данные вот в рамках работы данной группы тоже один из основных вопросов – это вот влияние воздуха на здоровье населения. И я думаю, это очень хороший проект, который поспособствует решению самых важных и актуальных проблем города, именно связанных с экологической ситуацией. И это как бы не вопрос, вот просто был комментарий, что мы с мэрией города Бишкек готовы со своей стороны оказывать всяческое содействие в реализации данных таких проектов. Благодарю. Спасибо большое. Дайте мне перевести. Она сказала, что я представитель от мэра офиса Бишкек офиса. And uh, I'm fully agree with uh, Professor Baklan who mentioned that um, data is important, but also important the scientific expertise and analysis of the data. And by using this, this kind of scientific expertise and conclusion, we will do the other uh, adaptation works. And uh, she mentioned that uh, in Kyrgyzstan, they have a council from governmental organization to develop the index of uh, air quality index and how they will impact to the uh, health of the population of the Bishkek. And thank you very much. We are open to cooperation and collaboration. We are supporting this project. It's a really good project. And thank you very much and good luck. 
Okay, I, I think um, we almost ran out of time. So I'm very grateful to our offline and online participants. And uh, thank you so much uh, to Dr. Isai for um, presenting and answering uh, to all the questions. Thank you to the WMO representatives for such detailed comments. So I think we'll conclude at this point. Thank you.